Hello and welcome. Uh, we should be live uh, to another episode of <clears throat> uh, Loose Cannon Show. Uh, we're back again. I think we, I'm not sure. I think we were supposed to have a show last week and we, we pushed it back to today because it just worked out better this way, uh, ultimately. Yeah. Because now we have, I have them right over here on my desk. We have these wonderful uh, books three books we're only going to cover one of them uh three i'm actually just going to call them war books because um it makes these are in my opinion exactly what one you should be doing instead of anthologies because anthologies are great don't get me wrong i have all all five of the current anthologies uh over on my shelf over there and you know, they're great. They're curated, though, to be like, we're going to tell you, like, everything you need to know on this topic. But I feel like like a hardcover little book like this, you have the art. The art already exists because all the lore books in the game have the art already. Yeah. So it's just cool. like, it's, it's right there, you know? And then a nice sleeve to put it in. Can you imagine a whole library devoted to <laughs> Destiny? That's, that's that's kind of what I mean. Like, I I, I feel not? like I would much rather like have dozens of these on my shelf. Like, <clears throat> <clears throat> let me let me pull up Ishtar really quick because you could you could categorize it by like releases or something, right? Sure. Um. So so we have the Witch Queen, right? And so the Witch Queen came out on its own with six books season of the haunted had two for a total of eight season of plunder had three for a total of 11 season of the seraph only had one so 12 books total for this past year imagine if it's lightfall week two or whatever and it's like okay you can now purchase the lore book collection of the witch queen it's 12 books in a nice sleeve like this books exactly like this you know <laughs> You sound like an infomercial. No, but I, it's such, I feel like it's such, I hate to say it's a missed opportunity. I hate when people say that it's a missed <laughs> opportunity, but it's such a missed opportunity because the art is made, the words are written, everything is ready. All you need to do yeah, is yeah. manufacture it and then sell it. And, then and if you act now. Yeah, if you act now, Bungie, you can get this out. Uh, you can you can sell, let's see, what do we have? Um, so it started in... It started in officially in Forsaken, which had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven books. Uh, Wall of Wishes, the twelfth book, doesn't actually have any lore; it's just there. So right there, eleven books, just like we have twelve this year. Forsaken alone has eleven, and then you go for the three seasons after. You have one, two, three, four. You have ten. You have thirteen. So it's one more. See how like how almost exact each release would be. To this, That's like, right. just a little more than 10 uh, range. <laughs> Shadowkeep had 7. Season of Dawn had 2. Worthy had 2. Arrivals had 2. So that's uh 13 again, right? 7 plus 6. 13, 13 books again. And then Beyond Light had 8. Uh, Chosen had 3 for 11. Season of Splicer had 3 for 14. Season of the Lost had 2 for 16. Or 15. I forgot if I said 13 or 14 before. But either way, it's still right there. It's not that many. So you can have four releases. Forsaken, the year after Forsaken, Shadowkeep, Beyond Light, Witch Queen. Five releases of books in... The... I don't know. I, I mean, I'd pay like... What would you pay for that? For one release of $12? No, be, be genuine. I'm curious. What would you? <laughs> what would you actually pay for one of these releases assuming it has more than 10 these are hardcover i don't know if you have the collectors oh yeah like maybe like these are hardcover 30 bucks sure i'm saying i would pay more than that for 10 yeah i think it'd be worth more than that i feel like the manufacturing would be more than 30 probably well if you order now you're really derailing this, man. Like I was, I was really hyped about this, this idea. 
that we could. I love the idea. A thousand dollars. I get it. Oh, is that why you said that? Because uh, yes, uh, GT Finn in chat said a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, legitimately, I would, I would, if they said, "Here's a release," and and it was like. 60 to 80 dollars for like the small one or the large one for like the 11 buck is 60 the 15 16 buck is 80 i'd be like i get it you know that's that's a lot that's a lot and i want to i want them all put it, put it on there. my shelf yeah they'll be go. all on my shelves in, over there encyclopedia britannica destanica destanica <laughs> yeah. encyclopedia destanica yep that's exactly what it would be yeah. yeah yeah actually what does this say I- Ipsa Scientia. Are you reading it uh, Latin? I mean, I'm reading what the words say. I don't know what they actually uh, mean, but you know, <laughs> the 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 tree that Bungie likes here. This tree. Yeah. It's also on Cade's journal, which says Insola Thesauria. I can read yeah, that, that tree's here. That tree's come up a. Yeah. I wonder what the importance of this tree is. I just think it's like the whole grow your light symbol. Yeah, because it's always been that tree and then this crest, which has the hunters, the hunters, the titans, Who knows what the that? warlocks, and then the fourth one, which is yeah. blanked. <laughs> and it's just like... Everyone, I remember back in D one, everyone was talking about that, and I was like, "Oh, it's gonna be a uh, fourth class." And I was like, yeah, "Yeah, actually, I think so." Like people were saying it was gonna be like a druid class, and I was like, "That sounds fucking awesome. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was just gonna be uh, a place for the rogues. Yeah, I mean, I guess ultimately, <clears throat> for 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 humanity, guardians, okay. guardians, and extra for aliens maybe <laughs> the, the, the fallen and cabal um i i i made the decision um because i made the decision of, of which one to do because just based on where i started i picked the cabal one because that one was i the three are an osiris book a cabal book and either an elsie i believe it's an elsie book <clears throat> and so i just picked the cabal one and then after i did I noticed on the back that that they actually have numbers, and the Cabal one seems to be the second book intended in this this reading structure. So yeah, well, we're cares? technically starting with the second book, and I'm sorry about that. Well, I my lore card has vague tie-ins to you know the topic of Lightfall, but the one I picked, I've, I've been sitting on it because I didn't really know where it would fit in. So that, that's why I chose to do that one last hmm. week. I kind of thought it had something to do with... Because I already read all most of the lore when people were dumping it out on... But I thought maybe it would be a little bit more real. Something. Yeah, so you want to get into the lore card then? Yeah, we'll knock it out. Let's go. Alright, so... Um, Last week's lore card was Endothermia. <laughs> uh, it's a warlock ornament. What are they? That's called? a sweet Os- ornament. What 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 yeah. gloves are these? Osment Os- Osmiomancy. Osmiomancy. Yeah, Osmiomancy. Which is kind of like a hodgepodge of words, just making up a word, right? Yeah. Osmium, Osmium, and then like you know necromancy or any other kind of mancy whatever it's the manipulation of material right oh, so that's that's actually kind of just what the gloves look like to begin with yeah but these have like crystals of yeah it's, it's just it's just ice. boosting up the stasis Your yeah. cold upgrades have an additional charge that recharges quicker on direct impact the seeker spawn from the oh yeah i don't play warlock so whenever i see like a titan or warlock thing that's not like the absolute, you need to equip this when you're playing this class for the first time in the year. Like they're all, I don't know what that is to me. Right. Right. Well, what I found interesting about this particular uh, ornament is it kind of ties in with the Osmiomancy <laughs> lore card or lore uh, entry. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, when you read the lore entry, it's basically Guardians trying to dissect the power of the Taken and how it works and how to use it inside. You know, <clears throat> basically, how to use Taken energy or whatever Oryx found to use as a power to make his Taken, but mm-hmm. put it in some gloves. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay. So that's out of the way. So that's that's the lore entry in the nutshell. This is endothermia, and so right off the bat, you can kind of see it has that stasis look to it. Mm-hmm. So stasis is you know, the darkness, a darkness subclass. So anyway, if you it, endothermia is not really a word. <laughs> it sounds like a word, but it's not it's a word. Not. It's actually no. It's two words, uh, and so it's one of those things that Bungie loves to do. There, they combine words to make it kind of a pun or uh-huh. you know a funny or whatever. And so endothermia is play on words of hypothermia and endothermic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so endothermic is the chemical reaction in which the reactants absorb heat energy from the surroundings. And then okay. hypothermia is. You know, a lot of people are familiar with that. Hypothermia is a medical emergency that occurs when your body loses heat faster than it can produce heat. So it's funny because, or the pun, I guess, the joke is, hypothermia, you know, ice crystals, you think about getting a sudden shock of, of, uh, of coldness from your surroundings, and then your body overreacts and exerts itself because you can't produce heat fast enough. Therefore, you're you know, evacuated all your energy from your body's heart, and mo- motor functions and organs and whatnot, and you could shut down ultimately and die. So, uh, endothermic being the opposite is where you absorb the energy from the surroundings and basically convert it into a, a, a different state, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, the easiest one to kind of relate to without without getting into techno garble um, is the exothermic process, which we are, we can all kind of, you know, understand really easily. Uh, an exothermic process releases heat, causing the temperature of the immediate surroundings to, to rise. Mm-hmm. An endothermic process absorbs heat and cools the surrounding. <laughs> so this is where it gets confusing. So a chemical reaction will either absorb energy from its surroundings, or it will release energy into its surroundings. So if you think about it, like when you light a match and start mm-hmm. a fire, the fire is warm, you feel it, you're warm, because the chemical reaction in the fire is giving off heat to the surroundings. You are a part of the surroundings. An endothermic uh, process would be the opposite. So a, a reaction that absorbs energy is said to be thermic, in an endothermic reaction, the starting materials or reactants are more stable than the products you. They are in a lower energy state. Hmm. In order for the higher energy products to be formed, energy must be acquired from the environment. So, a reaction that results in products of greater stability, lower energy, than the reactants gives off energy and is said to be exothermic. An example, like I said, fire creating heat. In an endothermic reaction, energy enters. In in the exothermic uh, reactions, energy exits. So exo, endo. Now you get it, right? Mm -hmm. Some endothermic examples are using coolant, ice, chemical reactions that can rapidly cool down matter, such as heated machines or simple ice packs on a sports injury, that type of thing. Um, What I wanted to hone in on is, if you think about the darkness... And how we used to always say it's not an ice, not it's not about being, uh, you know, like an ice superhero, right? It's mm-hmm. not about that. What it is is very much the darkness, which is a type of entropy where it takes the surrounding environment and it converts it to a lower state, and the result is ice. You, you know what's uh, funny about that? Did you, ow. God damn it! Sorry, I just kicked my Uh-oh. desk. That, that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you see, I forget where it was. It was in an interview recently where they were talking about Strand and how they came to the decision of what Strand would be and like what it meant. 
and there was all this talk about like how uh how the light is like fundamental energies yeah. and then yeah darkness is more like like universal things and like physicality and 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 one of their early ideas with stasis was that it literally wasn't ice, that it was like frozen time. Like time stood oh, still neat. in the yeah. um, in the crystal of stasis. Oh, wow. And cool. I think it is just that simple to to say that's what it is. That's nothing needs to change about stasis except for maybe some of the naming conventions because they did yeah. make it like icy with um silence and squall cold yeah. and snap you know things like yeah. these <laughs> but yeah. dusk field good time yeah that's there a good one go. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's a good one glacier yeah, grenade would need a change things like yeah. that well it's it's funny because like still it's still kind of a point of contention for a lot of people mm-hmm Ice powers, yada yada yada. I mean, it, but it is it is in, it, in it our is. understanding, it's entropy that yeah. Is and so the ice. byproduct, so the byproduct of that energy robbing darkness force is mm-hmm. ice because you've created, you've taken the universe around you and you've converted it to a lower state. Mm-hmm. So that's so I, I thought this was interesting because while it's just an ornament and. It just has like a stylization of stasis. Mm-hmm. It's it's related to osmiomancy, which is the same idea in principle of trying to take something you understand and use it as a tool, you know, armor. Mm-hmm. And what I what I thought was what I thought was really kind of the key here is there's a lot of things that are happening under the surface within the that people don't technically hone in on or talk about. And this is kind of one of those things where you read the lore entry and you're like, oh, that's cool. They figured out how to use some power that Oryx had, right, Mm -hmm. Uh, as a weapon or armor. Well, that's not the extent of it. Um, You know, the the whole idea behind Destiny and our paracausality, as people like to throw that word around, paracausality allows you to physically manipulate the surrounding basic elements and fundamental pieces of the universe that paracausality isn't just you know a a fantasy magical element it's the element it's the part that drives the entire part of destiny or the guardian or light or the traveler x you know the example of the darkness those Paracausal forces are allowing our guardians to manipulate the known universe and use it to fight the darkness. And the darkness is doing the exact same thing, but in an opposite way, right? Mm. And so I think what people need to realize is when they say darkness powers, the fundamentals of those darkness powers are much more rooted in paracausality, but only because... That's what you're physically seeing. So if you think about exothermic and endothermic, when you say solar, when you say arc, when you say void, you're seeing the result of that in the surrounding environment. Whereas we, what we've witnessed with stasis is this internal robbing of the environment. you, But the result is creating a lower state for matter. And I think what's cool is like strand being of the mind, being something that's internal being able to tap into a mind web feel strands of you know matter that are much more rooted in mental state what you're seeing is something inside manifest outside and so i never thought about this before because until now because all of the all of the elements were very easy to understand that's what we are that's what we understand and know and so we can see so we can see the sun see, you know, see these results of the of the light manipulation uh-huh. in our in our inner surrounding areas however in darkness it's very much robbing the universe and what you're seeing is the result of that um, intern is coming out i'm so glad that you you chose to do um i already forgot what it was called <laughs> end of <30 laughs> today yeah. Because I'm I'm reading the Osmiomancy gloves right now and uh-huh. 
given the current knowledge of what the what Bungie has recently said about stasis intended originally being I, the idea behind it being like a time stopping me- mechanic i'm rereading this lore entry and with that logic in mind and knowing that these gloves empower a stasis ability in particular it's 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 kind of crazy let me let me read you a, a part of this no, Taking involves reforming matter in a self-contained reality where the creator defines past, present, and future. Imagine how more insightful being how more insightful being could expand these definitions to different ends. Overcoming a target's will must consume a large portion of energy. What if you use that energy for larger shifts in reality? You could teleport an army into a hive mothership, move a fleet outside time and space. Uh, it, it goes on to it goes on, but it's it's this kind of idea that the taken power the mm-hmm. which which I think Savathun in 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 the Witch Queen actually said maybe just before Witch Queen <clears throat> had a line about how how Oryx isn't really even using it to its fullest ability, right? So yeah. it's it's yeah, it's, that's it's, true. It's interesting to think that that taken becoming taken puts you into a your own little dimension where the creator defines past, present, and future, and stasis was intended to be freezing time, putting time into a stasis lock, and so it's like, is the act of being taken the same? come from the same origin of power that stasis does do we already have the taken power yeah yeah so that's exactly what i was what i was honing in on oh i'm sorry dealing yeah yeah so we're dealing with the darkness and i think there's just like a quick easy way to say hey what they're what they have found is just because they're playing with taken doesn't mean they're not necessarily taking playing with something much bigger the darkness so the darkness Think about it. The darkness, the worms by proxy, the power that Oryx got was all yeah. from the darkness. So I wonder I wonder if Oryx's taken abilities, because I, I can hear an argument in, in either form, are sure. the lesser understood or the greater understood in comparison to our stasis abilities. Yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't know which one would technically yeah greater yeah because but that, that's a good point yeah. the act of taking like they like that entry just said it must consume a lot of energy mm-hmm. um it required like forcing an opponent under your will so like with stasis it's just you're frozen because i'm making you frozen but with him he's he's like doing he's doing it different and and it requires more of him so he's not using it efficiently well, I thought what what I thought was funny is, so the Oryx and his ship and the whole idea of taking uh, was very much rooted in his own practices of turning things inside out and emanating his own reality into the world around him. So, like taking wasn't just taking; it was it was like basically bringing the power from within and then exerting it onto the universal surrounding like taking himself and imposing it on the surrounding area. And then remember at the end of the campaign when we're fighting uh mini Oryx, the campaign of uh the Taken King, he takes himself. We've had confirmation that that was him taking himself. And then always just felt kind of like, well what does that mean? Like he yeah. took himself. What what does that do? But now with all of this in mind, it kind of implies like he was reversing time on himself a little bit he was he was putting himself back to a point where he wasn't about to die right right yeah interesting right ah oh, that's crazy i never so uh, so it, it it's good it's good fodder because now we have something else that ties this whole and i thought what a what a neat little tidbit that kind of ties into the global view of what's going on, what we're headed towards. Yeah. And, uh, so anyway, 
just it's, it's cool because it gets your it gets your gears turning. It makes you think about things. It gives you another perspective. It's kind of like standing on the table and looking around the classroom vantage point. And uh, and so that's what this thing did to me is because I remembered it. And then mm-hmm. I was like, wait, what is relevant right now? Let me go look through all these. And then thought, wait a second. This is way more relevant than I ever thought, especially right now. Yeah, it's so, crazy. It's crazy how perfectly timed that that really became. Because I'm honestly it's just, just thinking about this for like the rest of the day. Yeah, it's just funny because a lot of these things that happened or a lot of lore entries and grimoire even that exist in the Destiny lore all of a sudden find a new place of within each you know year each time that we encounter something new and it allows you to kind of see things holistically from another way. but that's cool yeah well that yeah that i know really, i know that's just consuming <laughs> like all my all my focus right now well, that's okay because, we... well, that's okay because now when you read what you're about to read, you'll kind of have a little bit more to kind of chew on. What I'm about to read, the 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 book here has nothing to do with any of that. Well, well, sure, but it's going to have you know some relevance to it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was cool. I thought it was no, that was we're, amazing. Well, like we're thinking about like Callus, and we're thinking about power. And you know what is what is all of that, and uh, and so you, if you think about the darkness as being epicenter, enemy types that we're dealing with, blah blah blah, uh, it kind of puts things in perspective because we all know that right now the central. Um, you know, access point for us to focus on is the witness. And mm-hmm. because we've realized he's been tied, you know, he's been tied to a lot of and Callus and these raid bosses that even the Exo creation. Mm-hmm. Well, so, um, then I guess, uh, we just want to get into the, and into the collector's edition, uh, I'm just going to call it a lore book because it's basically just a physical lore book, and that's why I'm so excited about these. That's cool. Yeah, let's do it. So um, this is, as I said earlier, this is technically what I would probably consider the the second uh, lore book. We should have started with the Osiris themed one, which, based on um, headers in in the books, uh, is called Breakdown. This one is called Beloved, and the third one is called Bitter. Um, so, <clears throat> while we're only covering the one this week because it is, even though it's it's one, it's still thirteen pages. So, I mean, getting through all of it would, <laughs> would be quite a bit. Um, w- what I am going to do as as time goes on, I'm going to transcribe the other ones into Google Docs so they're they're easier for us to take notes on and everything. Um, we're going to get all three of them together, and then I'm going to do a. Um, well, I guess I don't want to promise this because it might just be like a while before I get to it, but I want to um, do like a reading because I've done that before for the collector's edition lore. I think it was in um, Shadow Keep the last time I did it. So people who don't have the collector's edition and don't want to look at Reddit images of yeah. of reading, yeah, yeah, you can listen, and then once it is finished, uh, I will we will um, tweet the copied version of our, sh- our of our notes without any of our comments or things in it, just so you can you can read it yourself and also a not just Reddit version where, cause I, yeah. I hate, I hate reading the images off of all of Reddit like that. Cause it's like, Oh, it's that's so difficult. Quality. Yeah. And, you have to like zoom and pinch and clavs and, 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 and you have to trust that they, they posted it in the right order because like, yeah. Yeah. there's no page numbers or maybe there are, but if there is, they're so small that you don't really notice them. And all you have are like the like little titles on each page. And it's like, I am three. I am centuries old. I am three. I am 35 years old. I am seven years old. I am 38 years old. And it's like, okay, well, is it actually going back and forth? Or are we supposed to read this in, in how they age? And so it, it kind of creates a bit of a mess. So 
both of those will eventually be released uh for everyone's uh ease of reading and or listening when i when i just go through because uh i used to use audible but i heard that was like uh got bought out and now it's like spyware or something so I'm, I'm a little what hesitant. now is this it really was a while ago did you not hear about this no <laughs> it was I, like I, maybe use, not... I use audible yeah i i heard that and i i, I was just like all right we'll just be safe i'm taking it off my computer now and i haven't found anything uh convenient since so oh. well i haven't had it on my computer but I always on my i listen to audiobooks all the through audible Oh wait, what did I say? You said aud- aud- audible. Not audible, the other one, audacity. Oh, audacity. Yeah, I the the stupid uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, not the... audible. <laughs> <laughs> I use audible too. Yeah. You should Audacity. Audible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A- audacity is the free version of like acid or any kind of um, audio software. Yeah. Yeah, because it used to be really good and it was free and it was yeah, like, yeah, and it fell really apart, man. It sucks now. Open source and all that, and then it was just like they sold it off and it's still free, but now it's like like spyware or some shit. At least from what I heard, I yeah. this was like two years ago that I heard this, so it could have it could have exchanged hands again and is no longer in CD hands. But in any case, yeah. Um. So I don't really know how, how we want to do this. If we want to read it or if we just want to kind of go well, through think, it. What do you think? I think you could probably just, you don't have to hire things, to, but I think there's some good meat. Yeah, know? no, there absolutely is. That's why we wanted, wanted to do it. Um, so I guess we'll just, we'll just start from the beginning as normal and we'll just read as much as, as we feel is necessary to read and then continue sure. on. Um, so the first, the first page here is, is titled, uh, I am three. My father is pregnant again. So this probably comes as like a shock to many people to hear that Callus had been pregnant just right out the gate like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll read this cause it's a short entry. The woman standing guard over his brood bo- bower is not my mother. My father invites me to visit while he nurses her young. But I am afraid to pass her. Her tusks are huge. Ah, huge. She greets me kindly and gives me a scraping to scratch my father's hide. I do not understand where my mother has gone. In the stores, Atsha tells me mates stay together their whole lives. But Atsha is a scion. Maybe there are things about mates that scions do not know. I go into the bower. I'm not sure if that's the right word. I ask my father if my mother is dead. He draws me close. He asks me to sing to my new siblings. His belly is soft and strong, fat with the brood pouches where the babies grow. I watch one of them <laughs> climb to find his teat. I know that mother and and father mate. That mother gestates the young and delivers them to father's pouches. That father broods them until they are weaned. Atya told me how the mother must stand guard while the sessile <laughs> and vulnerable. Sangard, while he is sessile and vulnerable, she must keep the other females away from him, lest he discard her offspring and take on the brood of another female. I asked my father if that is really true. Can a father choose to forsake his children? And of course, father says, that's how you know that I love you. I could have turned you out of me, and I did not. He tickles me. I laugh. So, so right out the gate, there's a punch. Like, what the hell? Yeah, it's just cabal <laughs> biology. Like, I remember, I remember D <laughs> one. You got really hung up on the idea of the the phrasing that they used, where they they called cabal Morph. morphs. Yep. Yeah. And like, do they change shape? Can they like morph into something else? And this is the the body shape that they choose. And it sounds a little bit like that with the idea of brood yeah. pouches that you can just go done with you now you know and then we saw in the raid the the bathers coming out of just the black yeah so yeah it's crazy so a brood pouch is a pouch in certain fish frogs and invertebrates in which the eggs are protected before hatching yeah 
which is interesting because they've been called turtles and they've been called rhinos. They've not been called yeah. fish, frogs, or invertebrates. Do you think but they are invertebrate? Fine. Cabal oh, have been oh, called. Sure, why not? They're morphs, right? <laughs> I mean, well, actually, I always thought I always thought it was interesting how they had such a fishy, uh, fishy look. You know, especially like the ship in space with the iconic uh, Dorji art, the Delbrick art, and looks like a, a, a fish hook. And then, like, the Leviathan is coming to, you know, bite it. But it's not. It's a spaceship travel through space in the yeah. arc of a fish hook. Yeah. So, anyway. And then you got this gaping, like, almost big mouth bass look to the and ship. And then the, the Cabal themselves and their face just look like piranha face fish almost. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have um, from Destiny 2's Collector's Edition the um, Callus booklet here, which yeah. details um, what he wants done to all the conspirators in the Midnight Coup. And I have it for a reason. We'll get to it at the end of the show. Okay. Um, okay. But so there's there's this one line in here that feels relevant. Um, he has swelled up with growth, which happens usually when someone feels they're smaller than their status deserves. So, and it shows this, this cabal who, for no, who seems like they should be kind of small and skinny, almost like a scion. Yeah. Based on the size of their head, but their arms are just like humongous and like with like fat, like. I don't even I don't even know if, if that will this this guy <laughs> for anyone watching it's it's Iska all the confidant so I wonder if I what 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 <laughs> yeah there's a lot to unpack because if the cabal or if the cabal if you take that word at its face value and you say the cabal are morphs you know, scions aside, let's you know because we know they're there's something else, but just the the cabal themselves and black goo oil that pretty much permeates all of their machinery and is their life force and is in their bath- bathers' uh, birth is kind of uh, it's kind of like an ominous thing. And then Holy how they shit. grow fat with strength and they just get bigger in size when they bath- hey, this cabal needs to be larger. Fallen are invertebrates. Elixir. Well, they're invertebrates. They're 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 um, yes, they are bugs. Yeah, where they're skeletons on the outside and they molt. And ninety percent of all living animal species are invertebrates. That's a lot. Yeah. So I guess technically speaking, the likelihood that cabal are invertebrates is pretty pretty high if they have brood pouches. (laughs) <laughs> yeah um and so it goes from Keitel being three to Keitel being centuries old which is another looks like bam here you go centuries old the fact that they well, can live that long can i just point something out real quick I don't yeah know of course please later so for everyone out there wondering uh this is seth dickinson yes <laughs> yeah of course it is <laughs> I know he's not prevalent on social media, and we say this all the time. Uh, he very much is in rooted in writing. Yes. Yeah, I, I feel like he always know. gets the collector's editions as well. Yeah, yeah. This feels a lot like him. Yeah. Um. So I am centuries old. I am beating an assassin to death. Their helmet splinters in my fists. Their their taut rings in my sinuses. Their taunt rings in my sinuses. You are a child in a general's costume. None of the vision of your father. None of the drive or strength of the one they call Dominus. You will not be remembered. My father put those words in the assassin's mouth. He put the blade in the assassin's hands. I have been stabbed in the rib cage, but the ribs of the cabal are close. Are a closed vault. The enem- We evolved to face our enemy. I have been shot in the arm, but I wear armor, even in private. I have been shot in the hand, but I have another to make a fist. I break the assassin's skull as I broke my father's heart. I send the enactine blade back to him, as he will one day send it back to me. So, 
I mean, they have ribs, so I guess they're vertebrate creatures then. But it's like not really. Well, it sounds uh, like it's. It sounds like they had ribs, but then the ribs like evolved to yes. enclose. Yes. So, like, whatever their vital essence, caged. Something. Yeah. And so, um, for for anyone who's wondering, so we go. We have her as three. She's three. This is long before, or maybe not long before, in terms of grand scheme, but this is before the Midnight Coup. She's centuries old. This is clearly after the Midnight Coup because she has an assassin coming from her father. I would go back to when she was three. I am three. Something has gone wrong between the woman and my father. And I love how this this one begins. It is one of my favorite things that I've had seen written in Destiny. I slide on my greased belly through the palace halls, pretending I'm a whale kayak. Guards <laughs> smile at me and I smile back, but I keep my ears pressed to the floor. Nearby, the woman bellows in his chambers. She says he has not kept his political promises to the expertorate families that approved their match. He is so wounded, he says. Doesn't his lush, luscious body delight her? Doesn't the right to fill his pouches with her young bring her joy? She says she is not a sexist, and that this is not the era of lead. She worries about policy and external security, not his lusciousness. He complains that she does not make him happy. She says there is more to life than happiness. He disagrees. She calls him weak. He calls her a curse and a killer. She roars and strikes him. I gasp into the floor. It is the first time I have ever heard my father in pain. The guards stand very still. Then there is a terrible sound. I am too young to understand it as the sound of my father opening his brood pouches. I do not want them anymore. My father, the emperor, says quite softly. If you cannot love me, then how could they? You can find another male with open pouches. But some barracks bow. But be sure I never know him. I will not have by blows. The large tusked woman screams in rage. She stampedes out past the guards, past me. Her hands are full of little things. Yeah. It's a it's a pretty fucked up entry. But there's so many like terms in this that I just think are hilarious, like the greased <laughs> belly sliding. And yeah. uh you can find another male with open pouches, some barracks bow. It's just like Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, what is this culture? Yeah. Oh man. Like, what could you even unpack? I mean, is even the era of lead, what is that when basically? Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> just to jump ahead just a little bit, um, in the next entry, they actually mention uh, a myth from the age of sails. So we have an <laughs> era of lead and an age of sails. And it's just yeah. like, okay, what, what, is this, what does this mean? Like... <sighs> Like and if you I just imagine- broke, it, it said simply era of lead was fighting and then sailing, getting. Well, we we do get a little more on what the age of sails are. Uh, yeah. When we conquered the stars, surely you know it as you've been briefed on the Oxa. But like it sounds like the era of lead is like back back when the Torah bottle was much more like conservative and yeah. Uh, doesn't my luscious body delight her? Doesn't the right to fill his pouches with her young bring her joy. She says she's not a sexist. So there was like a political <laughs> movement for male cabal in this yeah, in this right. world, I guess. You're right. Yeah. Interesting. So then um the next entry uh cuts to I am thirty five years old. I have just returned to the palace from my first appointment on the cruiser Adil Talol. Showing our banner in the Sindhu marches, I saw no action. I feel like a fraud. The sheltered Princess Imperial, who never left the rails of her father's brood pouch. She demanded that the Evocate General promote me to a staff position back home. She has refused in a tantrum. Father throws a t- tremendous celebration to commemorate my return. The streets of Torabottle run pulp- pulpy with trampled fruit the skies rain cloud fry stunned by fireworks 
I escape my attendants and stand in a corner of the palace ballroom, drinking pollen water and pretending I am back in my fighter. Your name is a prayer for war, the Evocate General says. I snap to attention. She laughs at me and offers a small harpoon of cana canapes? canapes and a cocktail with a middling-sized shrub. <laughs> I decline and she tisks. You should enjoy yourself. It's your party, although we both know it's his party. My father named me for a star, I say. Nothing to do with war. Yes, but the star Keitel was named for a myth. Not an old homeworld myth, either. A myth from the Age of Sails. When we conquered the stars. Surely you know it, assuming that you've been briefed on the Oxa. The o Odile... Is. Sorry? Yeah, I was just going to say, here it comes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Odile Xenotaph and archive sometimes oxta depending on how you construct the acronym the alien oracle that led us to the graves of ark must beware now oxa is a scion myth and the scions are a sensitive topic my father wants to free them from bondage it claimed to record the story of the galaxy and to prophesize what may yet come a black box for galactic civilizations if you prefer it in pilot's terms the Evocate General nods to the pin on my right pauldron. I am conscious of my shaved down tusks of the sores left by my fighter's interface. The doomed and damned left the record of the downfall in the Oxa. Your star got its name from the oldest myths in the archive. And when your mother told your father that story, the star became your name. A prayer that will go as it must, and all the way it must go is struggle. Ayat, not a word in Ulurant, or any other cabal tongue, but Keitel means something else. Yes, it may not always go as it needs to go. A good name for a soldier. A strange name for a daughter, I say. Your father chose it for your mother's sake, out of love. I remain at attention. I do not look at her. So she's dead. The Evocate General looks sharply at me. I can tell by the motion of her cocktail shrub in the edge of my vision. He never told you? No. Well, she sounds genuinely shocked, then it is not my place. Evocate General, a junior pilot, should not address her senior officers so directly, but we are in the palace, and I am the Princess Imperial. What does your name mean? She grins. Her tusks are huge. My parents and soldiers know mythology, too. So, <laughs> so, it's so yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the unpacking... We we have we have words for ox. Yeah, we've only ever had oxa for so long, and it was like, okay, but what does it mean? <laughs> right, exactly. And so now we have Odal Xenotaph and archive. So here's what's here's what's really interesting about the. Ox. They found it in the graves of Ark. Right. Mm -hmm. We. And so it was an alien oracle that led us to the graves of Ark. Remember in the Arkborn lore entry, uh, way back when they talk about yes, yeah, okay. So that was a part of that whole uh, mission because we're talking about the, you know, this is the sail, right? They found the Oxa. They led to that, and then. What's really cool and interesting is they have the little black box, basically. To they found they found a sh they found a, sh a vessel. They found the black box to that vessel, and then a word pops up that's not from their language. Mm -hmm. And so we all know what ayat, you know, basically the hunger for knowledge that that is prevalent. The whole books of sorrow. Ayat is repeated. Basically, Ayat in in summary is the thirst for knowledge creates um, your purpose in life. <laughs> and yeah. So it kind of feeds this thing. Like you're not supposed to you're not supposed to know everything because the the hunger for the knowledge is keeps you going. And and so it's here and it's prevalent and it's like present in the word now. And, and they've discovered it. Anyway. 
And and so this is when Keitel is 35 years old, and since Callus is still throwing these parties, still before the Midnight Coup. Uh, now, for anyone who doesn't know who the Evocate General is and the importance of their name, who then she replies, uh, my parents were soldiers, soldiers know mythology too. It, the Evocate General is actually Amun Arath, Primus of all legions. Uh, so... When Keitel says, what does your main name mean? She's saying, what does Amun Arath mean? And it's been a while where we were like, so it's just a coincidence that Amun Arath and Zivu Arath are like a thing? Uh huh. And it's like, no, it's not. Because even before Amun Arath was born, the parents, the Cabal soldiers that were her parents had some experience with Hive and they knew the myths and they they had this fight with Zevo Rath's forces and I, I guess one made it out alive because Cabal don't go home if they lose they die yeah they do yeah they fight to the death there's nothing yeah. there's only death yeah so and I thought I thought this is crazy because if you read this whole thing as a whole, um, it's like it's like they they were doomed from the beginning. Mm-hmm. The hive had already had already infected, yeah, in way, uh, through their through their culture and their words. And so it's here; it's already here. It's there; it's done. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, Siva Arath, we know she very old. Very involved. Yes. Uh, yeah. And, so the next the next entry <laughs> goes back to when she's seven. I'm not going to read this entire one. I'm just going to give you the, the yeah. gist of it. Uh, so as many people might remember, Gaul was an outcast on Tora Bottle, uh, basically a slave. Like they were so low born, he might as well have been a slave. Yeah. And so adopted albino. Yeah. Well, that came later. Uh, this came first, where he sure. was a gladiator, and uh, he. So Keitel and Callus are in their like private box to watch the gladiator fights, as in in the the brunt bloodbath, watching the games, where gladiators strive atop whales drowning in a sea of wine. The defending <laughs> champion Ulurunth pilots a whale named Denouncer from a cage of iron, and their opponent is actually the gladiator. Gaul, where it's G H A U apostrophe U L, and so yeah. then I guess it got shortened to Gaul, and I'm really curious why that is, or is it just are we pronouncing it wrong and it's just pronounced Gaul? Well, I think it's the alien language just kind of showing you there's much more, there are more consonant and reflections, and maybe there's like guttural sounds that humans can't make, but like they call him Gaul, right? But like, but do they know, call like, him Gaul? Gaul? <laughs> But do they call him Gaul to satisfy our calling him Gaul? Or do they call him Gaul because that's how he his name is pronounced and that is how his name is spelled? Because then even in this, even in this like booklet, we get more instances of Gaul, but it's spelled in the way that we know it without the apostrophe U L. Maybe. So Maybe. it's 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 a little weird. I don't know exactly what the point of it is i'm i'm getting a little hung up on things that don't matter it's okay much. it's okay i understand it's like it's like what happened five though yeah they kept morphing and changing their name yeah <laughs> and so um callus callus is is watching gaul and he's like oh i was a slave once i was utterly under the control of the praetorate i was prince designate and it was my job to promise a bright future while they made their miserable progress the empress before me was so old that her body was turning to bone. That's what happens to us, you know, if we live too long. In ancient days, those who ossified would be honored as statues and carried about the herdlands to share their wisdom. Her yeah. ruling days were coming to a close, but the praetorate, those canny slave mongers, they wanted her to remain on the throne so they could avoid the chaos of a succession. They put her on a ship modeled after a land whale. Its mouth was a scoop, so it would never have to stop to refuel. They accelerated it to the edge of light and flew it in an endless procession around our worlds. 
so that the empress fossilized in slow time would never die, so that I would never assume the throne. Sound familiar? Yep. Yep. It's messed up. What happened to the old emperor? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Sorry. so Keitel, <laughs> Keitel asks, "What happened? How did you become the emperor?" And he he he's, he's kind of flipping about it. Oh, she took her own life. I think who could go on yeah, that yeah, way? But yeah. it's interesting. Someone who I imagine, if if your body has ossified and you're you're effectively being called a statue, can't really move on your own. Right. So. How did that happen? One of one of life's greatest mysteries. How did the person so that's who couldn't the, move take their own life? That's the yeah. That's so. That's the coolest thing. Uh, also, lately that we've learned about the cabal because the cabal are just they have long been the most ominous enemy. You know, like the mm-hmm. other ones, we can kind of understand, and they've more rich story. You know, just to to describe them and whatnot. But the fact that they turn to stone, basically, or given enough time, that's a new one. Mm-hmm. And so that's really cool. Um, yeah. Just to think of Cabal ossifying. We have some ossified references in uh, Destiny. A lot of them, actually. And uh, not that they have much to do with this, but it's just neat that they brought that word into to describe what happens to Cabal. Turn to stone, man. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but yeah that wasn't that wasn't a slow death that was a murder <laughs> yeah yeah that was a straight up murder the the uh the next entry is um i am 38 years old i drown in the cockpit of my ship so basically what's happening here is um, in this era of the Cabal, the Sindhu are fighting back. They're, they're, they, they want free of the Cabal rule. And as we've known for a few seasons now, Keitel was a star pilot. Um, and this entry is basically just her fighting Sindhu. Um, do you think there's anything like of note to really go uh, talk about? No, I just think it was cool because it shows a little bit more potatoes for Keitel's as a more nim- like a more agile fighter than we, we give her. We just yeah, think of her just as just, big, just because lumbering. she's a very yeah. large woman doesn't mean that she's <laughs> she's um not agile. Right. Yeah, yeah. Of course, this so that's, is in her fighter. Exactly, but this gives her like a more. Yeah. This gives her more more mobile. Yeah, presence like she can she can dodge some bullets. If she needs to. Anyway, that's what I thought was cool about that. Yeah. Was kind of bringing all I was really doing was kind of bringing some uh, thoughts that Keitel's not just a statuette, stationary figure. She can yeah. actually. <clears throat> uh, base. I'll, I'll read the last the last bit of it. Um, so yeah. she's she she's fighting them under the strain. My wingman aorta shears off his heart. I am stronger. I wait, crushed by the acceleration of my own ship's haste, until my missiles signal they are in the ninety percent bracket. I fire the Sindhu answer with jamming, with decoys, with interceptors, with the final close in, close in fire of their guns. They answer well. Six little pinpricks of white light, six kills. Another three survive. Three against one, and no Delta V left to maneuver. I am doomed. I go in grim and laughing. The adi- I a dial Tololo recovers me two days later. I spill exhausted from the drained out cockpit into the arms of waiting medics. They try to hustle me to the emergency baths. I bar them away. I rise to my feet. I roar to the gathered deck crew. All nine, all mine. And they roar with me, not with me, not adulation for the Princess Imperial, but love for their new ace. Yeah. So it is it is really cool, but it is basically just that. Like, um, She's a badass pilot. Keitel's a badass pilot. Okay. You know, uh, just for the purpose of not spending too much time on it, we'll sure. continue. The next one is a big one. I am 35. It is later that same night of my homecoming. So after her big issue. Um, Molly Imali says, My father has just finished his fifth tub of pulque. 
and unbuttoned his imperial raiment. In the days of the Praetorate, public intoxication carried the death penalty. Now my <laughs> father dances among the miniature fleets, overturning two-meter models of doomsday weapons and legions wish to build. He plays with invisible drums with his hands, sobs his feet, and does the horns with his mouth. Ba ba ba, he roars. Ba ba ba, <laughs> and come on, and does the. Uh, sorry. This, I like it. <laughs> uh, come on, come on, damn you! Will you not join in? Make a wonderful noise. Ba ba ba, stomp with me, your imperial majesty. Molly Amali says, laughing brightly, looking furtively between my father and the icy evocate general. Amunarath has requested that we take a quiet moment to honor those soldiers far from the homeworld. Well, damn you, Amun, my father says cheerfully. I know what you're about. You want to drag your dour dour Dolores diligence into my house of joy. You want us to remember it's you who makes it all happen, your legions and your fleets. The Praetorate may be gone, but the Cabal is still a fighting empire, grim with the knowledge that all who came before us were swept away by the Dark Flood, and everyone who's not fighting on your front is a scavenger. Dead weight. Is that right? Your Imperial Majesty, the Evocate General, says neutrally, I thought only of tradition. Oh, tradition, is it? Praetorate tradition? Like your blood etching and your provings? Damn tradition. Tradition is how old force the young to reenact their miseries. My father picks up a gigantic forked warship and looks through its central aperture at Umunarath. Damn you. Can't you feel anything? Can't you live, Umun? I see how you prey on my daughter, you know. He snaps his jaws shut so suddenly there is a little thunder. Your daughter seems to me a fine pilot, Amunarath says. Oh, she seems fine to you, does she? My father's face bulges through the sun-devouring maw of a wooden prototype. The actual starship will dampen gravity with a lambda-soothing effect so that the target star cannot hold itself together against the blast of its own heart. She meets with your approval? Then why, Amun, did you, do you haunt her? Why do you steal her from me and send her away to die in some crushing chasm of a gas giant shattered by Sindhu missiles, compressed by depths by the deep where the worms lurk? Isn't that what you say, Umun? In the heart of every gas giant there is an abomination waiting to hatch? So why have you convinced my own daughter, my own flesh? Everyone is silent, absolutely still. To go play in the grave womb of the worms, instead of being happy on the homeworld of Tora Bottle where she can share my joy. I should not speak, but I do. Father, I had a duty to the people to serve. Duty, duty, he hurls the model like an accusation. Molly and Molly ducks. Sheotet moves as if he will leap on it and cover it with his body like a bomb. <laughs> what you had was a voice whispering in your ear, a poison in your tea, a pox in your blanket. The lie that everything is given value by its suffering and its strife. Everyone cowers before his shout except the moon and me. I am shocked to find that I do not fear my father. I have listened to him cast off my own siblings. I have known him to murder beasts I loved too well, but I am not afraid of him. And so this next section, I'm not going to actually scream it, but it's in all caps. So I can only imagine he is in fact, like top of his lungs shouting this. This is what matters, he roars at Amun, not your dire legions and their grinding progress. You only exist to allow this, this party, this is the point. Even the drums have stopped. Can't any of you have fun, he bellows. I, I've heard quieter alarms in the simulator when I fell into the dark hydrogen depths. Can't any of you live? Am I the only one here who's not utterly deranged? The only reason we don't all kill ourselves is that we feel good. The only reason we do anything, anything at all, even breathing, is that it makes it feels nice. That's the only way the universe has ever found to make existence tolerable. The only reason to exist is that fickle little quiver of reward the brain gives us for eating, for or drinking, or dancing, or working, or freeing our people from the bedamned praetorate, or loving our daughter. That's all. That's worthwhile in life. Simulation of the three primary vagus nerves, and if... Our whole psyche weren't built on the need for that reward, what would we be? Five? Vex? Nothing, Cabal, I tell you. Nothing, Cabal. He flings his arms out to embrace us all. What's the point if we can't have fun? What other point could there be? 
He stares straight at me. He says as if for my ears alone. I would have had a thousand more young if only I could have made you happy. This is, this is okay. So <clears throat> there's a lot. Yeah, that, um, was, that was the big one. That's why I wanted uh, to skip a few because I wanted to read that whole yeah. thing. <laughs> I, I, this, this one is multi-layered. Not only is it Destiny, but it has some real life ties too. But it, it, just in a nutshell, the coolest thing about First off, the thing that hits you the most, holy crap, Amun Ra is trying to send Keitel straight to the fundament, right? Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and like, Callus is furious because she's, you know, Amun is just wrapped up in the idea that you know, she's got to get one with the hive <clears throat> some way. Um, the crazy thing is we get a good window as to why Callus has this obsession with opulence and mm-hmm. indulgence and gluttony and all He's found the one thing that truly makes existence tolerable. And so I can't help but wonder if those silent screams, you know, writing kind of like life issues. And so I, I look at this and I, I wouldn't say definitive, whatever, but this really kind of pulls on uh, the reader to kind of show, you know, that there, there are things that might be worth more than. And so if you have this narrow, it's just these simple things, you're kind of you're, missing them. You're, <clears throat> uh, you're uh, cutting in and out again. Yeah, sorry. Um, my basic my basic point to this is if you're dealing with any kind of oppression or why does anything matter tendencies or what take solace and then there's a lot more to life than just what you may be thinking mm-hmm. yeah. and um i would say that <clears throat> as far as callus goes this was kind of a pivotal pivotal point for him it just kind of shows that he did in fact love <clears throat> yeah. creation at a way he loved making more cabal like his whole existence was he wanted you the guardian he loved you right mm-hmm. uh, that's very honest like that's the most honest you'll ever hear callus speak to you that he had this well, this infectious love for I mean, we'll we'll, we'll 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 try to get to it because um, yeah, yeah. I want to, I want to, I really do want to get to it. But we we get to see like the naked truth of Callus in this book. And yeah, that's, that's why it's so great. And you you're like right on the money of like his his love and everything. But it's just like there's like the beneath that exactly that is very important. But yeah. So that that's just what jumps out at me yeah. right off the bat. <clears throat> we get a good idea as to what the heck, um, you know, basically what was Keitel's purpose for Amun Arath and all. Oh, and mm-hmm. that was like, okay, well, let's hurl her at the... Now we're like, oh, crap. So Arath was trying to take Cabal there. Yeah. It, it was, it was anyway. a long... It's it, knowing what we know about what Umunarath did, and knowing, seeing that line about her saying like, um, "My parents were soldiers; they know the myths too." Yep, it makes it sound like this has been like a generational plan, where like long ago, like probably right when Catalyst came in, took over for the past empress and started changing things, diverting from war. And like kind of minimizing like what they were as a as a species, did yeah. her family kind of kind of do this? It's it's funny. It's it feels like Bungie's wanting to call them the cult of Zebra Wrath, but they're not doing it. But that's <laughs> really what it is, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um. So then the next entry is uh, I am centuries old, and so in this one. 
this is this is the an interesting one. So I am centuries old, and this is where Atzat, who you might remember, is from uh, one of the co-conspirators, along with the Moon of Wrath and Gaul and others, of course. Um, sure. They're kind of planning the Midnight Coup, and we're not going to read the whole thing here. Uh, but then, oh, sorry. No, I was just saying, yeah, because we kind of know that story. Yeah. And so, um, and so what we, there is one, one paragraph that we're going to, uh, read, which is at the end, of course, uh, my consort tried with all her heart and patience to rouse me, but I would not be roused. I was alone again, save for that one precious life booting in me. One, one out of all the lives we have tried to make this one survivor. And I felt, I felt if this daughter left me, if she went out of me into the world, I would be nothing, nothing. Utterly without sense of reason, when I gave birth to my daughter, my beautiful star, I felt the immovable pearl shatter around me. But ever since, I have feared that will one day that it will close again. And this time, I will have no way to break it. What I sense in Gaul's memory of this moment is contempt. Contempt for a man who had everything and threw it all away in the pursuit for mere sensation. But what I feel for the first time in my life is understanding. I understand my father all at once. I understand him. So it's kind of like what you were saying about his love for Keitel, yeah. how like deep it is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's in all, in all, you know, in all sense, like it, even, even the most loving of acts can, can damn me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, that's all I wanted to paint. Yeah. Picture is like, just because, you know, we see him as this vile, you know, devious, horrible figure in game. Mm-hmm. Um, in his eyes, it all comes from overwhelming obsession. You know, it's just a loving thing, and it's, it's like insane to conceptualize. It's there. It's there. It's the root of tenacity. Obsession with. Yeah. And so. In this in this meeting, uh, Atza is using the Oxa to kind of like hold everyone's minds together so they can secretly devise the plan. And yeah. Keitel sees this memory from Gaul's position, and now she's like, "I I can't go through with this. My father loves me so much. I have to I have to confess him." So the next entry is, "I'm a few days older," and so she's she goes she goes to uh, Callus to confess everything. And, uh, so he sees her and, uh, he's like my star. I don't suppose you've come home for good. And she says, father, I want to ask you something. What did you want when you took the throne? And he reveals to her, uh, he says, other than to conceive you, my star. Well, he finishes around the edge of his throne, holds up something Navi and worn down. Very few cabal will ever see this. It is the imperial trinket, an ancient bone retrieved from the debris around a once radiant black hole. Scholars tell me, Keitel, that eons ago, a species lived around the deepness and built an engine to tap the polar jets, but something came upon them from the dark and killed them all. So, um, oh crap, I, I just forgot. What, what civilization was that? Uh, what do you mean? I, it, it was from, uh... Uh, the books of sorrow. They were the ones that had the, uh, oh, uh, mm, the gravity. I looked it up to to have the name ready for the show, and I just I'm just blanking on it. But so this is this is basically talking about uh, from the entry where Zevo Wrath is going. Uh, they're not allowed to have dragons. They use our gods. Talking about the Amkara. So basically, he's holding an Amkara bone. Exactly. Yeah. And. But still, so further interest, um, next line, I know the tale, one of Evocate General's proofs that we must become mightier yet to survive. So this is Amunarath's proof that they need to get stronger and keep warring. Um, and so, of course you do. Now, this bone is a predator. It feeds on the gap between what you have and what you want. Did you use it against the Praetorate? Yes. And do you know what I found? that you could not because you wanted nothing. I was lost, Keitel, adrift in a fog, utterly unable to desire or need. 
all I could do was be. The bone had nothing to feed on if the wielder wants nothing. Yet ever since your birth reawakened me, Keitel, I have prized above all else the ability to want. The hunger to exist as more than mere existence. That is what I want now. To feel. To be more than just a being. What of my mother? Didn't you want her back? Oh, child, he looks into his wine, into his bone, and begins to salivate with tears. This is how Cabal cry, passing the anguish from the brain to the bowel for digestion and expi expiation. She had to care <laughs> for me when I was but a husk of a man. I was selfish, I was cold, I broke too much between us, and I cannot bear to hear, hear him stumble any closer to grief. And she left, and then you found someone else. I quickly finish. Yes, I tried to find someone more appropriate to my station. It didn't work. But at least I still had my daughter. He folds the bone away, smiles tenderly at me, and what is a daughter except the wish to have something to love? And <sighs> so close. So close for for Callus to not have the midnight coup happen, and he, f he fumbles yeah, it. He fucked it up. <laughs> So the next entry is, I am exactly that old when I realize my father, the Emperor Callus, is full of shit. Full of shit. <laughs> really just a, a great way to start it off. Can I say um, something real quick? Of course, um, of course. There, there's, a, there's a moment in life, and my wife loves but there's a moment in life when your children, your father or your mother, mm -hmm. full of shit. Like, there is a moment in your life when you've gotten smart enough, intelligent enough. Obviously, there's a moment when you think you know everything, but there comes a time yeah. just beyond that, like right, ab right about the time you're on your own and you realize all that stuff you heard, a lot of stuff you heard was just, they were full of shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my mother used to say that uh, vodka goes bad after you open it, so you have to drink the whole bottle in, in a day. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> God, that's horrible. Uh. That's um, I think that's an Arrested Development joke. That's that's not a genuine uh. thing my mother ever said to me. Okay, good, because I was gonna say, holy crap. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've had some, I've had hard upbringing, but god dang. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was nothing, nothing like that. This is uh. one of my, it's just one of my favorite jokes. Whenever I, I think, because yeah. I don't really think about vodka too often, but whenever I do, yeah. that's where my brain goes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm a father, and uh, it's exactly right. You know, you, there, there's a there's a point when your kids realize you are full of shit. <laughs> yeah. it, it's it starts when they realize Santa isn't real, and then it just kind of well, snowballs yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. They start questioning everything for good for good reason, though. Yeah, I like it. Anyway, continue. <laughs> uh, so the entry goes. Um, we'll, we got two more left, so we'll, we'll just get through this. Uh, the selfishness of it. The sheer calumny to pretend that all he did, that he did it all out of love for me, to insist that at the core of his festering psyche there is one foundational trauma which explains him. I could not feel, so now I must feel everything. I could not want, so now I am a creature of unbridled appetites. I could not love, so oh my daughter, love me. I did it all because I was afraid to be sad. The notion that this man's conquests and excesses could be explained by his deep fear of anahodinia is nothing but whale shit. It is bait he sets out for my heart. There will never be a moment when I understand my father. I already understand him. There will never be a final reconciliation. I am already reconciled. He is that he is. He was made by the Praetorate, and he made it of his empire. He made me, and now I must make something of myself. I already know my father. I know him because he has spent his whole life showing me who he is. The universe is not explained by the psychic terrain of, n of a knowable few. The cosmos is not a subject to the trite interior struggle to heal or self-actualize or escape some old wound. The Praetorate did not fall because it depressed my father, but because he undermined their political control of the legions. Gaul did not rise because of his burning will to conquer, but because he was the perfect plow for a revanchist consul and militarist evocate general to throw their might behind. The Sindhu do not rebel because of their soaring need for freedom, but because we exploit their worlds for fusion material and antimatter. 
Aunt Zot does not fear scion emancipation because she loves slavery, but because her social class's power depends on their moderating position between cabal rulers and subject masses. And my father does not deserve to be overthrown because I am nothing to him except his wish for someone to love him more and more and more. He deserves to be overthrown because he is a bad emperor. So I am exactly that old when I close my mouth and say nothing at all the coup to come. The weak wish for something to love them. They wish with hunger of a whale to be loved, and their need grows in proportion to that hunger. The strong work to be worthy of love. I will not be weak. I love this entry so much. Because <clears throat> the uh, the big paragraph about uh, the praetor it didn't fall, Gaul didn't rise, uh, the consul, militarist, evocate general did not throw their might behind, the Sindhu do not rebel, all these things. Atzat does not fear the scion emancipation, especially that one. Sci- Sign emancipation because she loves slavery, but because her social class's power depends on the mod yes. on their moderating position between cabal rulers and subject masses, which I've been saying for years now. So yeah. I'm so yeah. happy that it's right fucking there. Yeah. It's good. It's good because it kind of shows like well, to use a good example, it's like Star Wars, you know mm-hmm. like politics going on. Yeah. You wonder how did the Empire get Well, it was a lot to there was a lot at play. All these people were so, you know, afraid of losing their power in their life and whatever, that all of the dominoes just fell in a straight line to end up being yeah, Death Star wielding whatever. Anyway, that's kind of what's happening here. Yeah, you know? yeah. And 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 I I just love seeing like all these people like basically their motives behind why they wanted the midnight coup. And- behind yeah. why each of them did in in some capacity at least uh not mentioned is molly and molly but that's fine um and it if it, it really feels like lightfall maybe not lightfall itself but the seasons of lightfall will be the end of callus like he is he is this concretely finishes the 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 gaps in his story and all that is left for his for him is his death yeah right and so we come to the last entry. I am as old as I have ever been when I record these memories. Torah bottle is lost. Fallen not to the frontier threats and Munarath obsess over, but to the dark gate of her own obsession. Gaul is gone, consumed by the god he sought to usurp. Adael, Amali, and Lictor Sheotet are dead, claimed by the same assassins Callus now sends for me. He even had his favorite tea seller murdered. Callus is no longer my father. As I write this, I am playing a little game with that my troops love. We draw up imaginary legions from rosters of real mani- manipile- maniples and cent- centuries. The performances of those units in reality determines the success of the imaginary legion. I play this game under a private name. I play it very well, despite fierce competition. The legionaries joke that losing the homeworld was worth it just to shake up the game. Morale is high. Talus could not have played the game because he values nothing except himself. In the end, the selfishness will destroy him. He preaches of contracting universe with himself at the center, a glorious tide of night that will reveal his grandeur as final fixed axis of it all. But the moment will come when he sees that he is not that at that pole. He is off of he is off on the edge, and the dark is rushing over him, and then will be undone. Then he will be undone. Whether or not I am there to see it makes no difference. I have had I have a people to lead. So this is just before she comes to us. And there yeah. are two things that I need to point out in this. I I stumbled over the words. But so, um, I'm playing a game with that my troops love. We draw up imaginary legions from rosters of real maniples and centuries. The performances of those units in reality determines the successes of the imaginary legion. They're playing fantasy football. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. 
Is that the game that we have with the dice? And... We have a dice game? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just games. talking about the war the war table. Oh, the war pieces. I fucking love dice games. Um, And the other thing that I need to mention is in the guy I showed earlier, Iskaal, the tea seller, um, in uh, Callus's booklet of the people who have wronged him, he has all the members of the Midnight Coup, Gaul, Keitel, Umunarath, Lictor Sheotet, Adil Amali Mali, all these people. He also has his confidant, Iska All, whose crime... <laughs> I'll read this really quick. Uh, Iska was a poor businessman and simple, but he never shared a word I said. I am told he still sets up his tea cart on the same corner. I am told that Iska All from Fantor sells his tea to a clique of the Dominus's general staff, soldiers who tease him with the nickname Imperial Informant, as if he sends word to me in exile. His teas have found popularity at all for official wallowings. He has swelled up in growth, which happens usually when someone feels they're smaller than their status deserves. He goes on as if he has forgotten our friendship, as if nothing has changed. Poor Iska must die. <laughs> Uninvolved with the coup. He 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 just kept running his business. Yep. And Callus fucking murdered him. Murdered him. Yeah. Yeah. That is such a fantastic attention to detail. It, just the <laughs> fact that they were like, and he even had his favorite tea seller murder. Like, <laughs> why? Uh, and it's, it, I love that it's like concrete on his own evidence that Iska did not betray him. Iska did nothing wrong except forget their friendship. <sighs> Callus is fucked up. <laughs> uh, so our next show will be on the 26th. That is the week before, the Sunday before the 28th. Uh, Destiny is going down on the 27th on the Monday for a 24-hour period before Lightfall. We will continue with these books. We will go back for the Osiris, and then we'll do the Elsie. Unless I, I, I'll probably get them both done, and we'll just decide which one uh, seems cooler. Okay. <laughs> Uh, anything left to say? Nope, that's it. Callus right. nipples. Oh my god, wait. Didn't we skip over the part about Callus's nipples? No, it was there. Did I just read past it? I didn't even realize. <laughs> I don't even... My star, my father, world and sense. His nipples are like dark poison fruit bejeweled. I remember nothing of their taste. I don't suppose. Oh my god, I did. I skipped right over that line. Either way, uh, fun fun fact before we actually sign off. I in in the show teaser tweet, I referenced Callus's nipples because it was just such a like a uh, thing that this book had, and our tweet actually got flagged for having sensitive <laughs> content. I just found out this morning. So have a good one, everybody. Don't talk about nipples on Twitter. <laughs>